everyone. Matt Clark, research analyst here with Money and Markets with another uh, edition of the Bull and the Bear podcast. Now, I do want to make sure that you are checking out our website, moneyandmarkets.com, every day for safe, sound, simple, profitable investment information for your portfolio. Our chief investment strategist, Adam O'Dell, uh, Green Zone Fortunes co-editor, Charles Sizemore, and myself and the rest of our team work very, very hard each and every day uh, to provide you with the best information to bolster your portfolio and increase your gains. And when you check out the website, make sure you sign up for our uh, free daily e-letter. You'll get safe, sound, uh, simple, profitable investment information each and every day delivered to your inbox for free. Now, on with today's podcast. Um, while it's not great to trade on news headlines, smart investors do look at news uh, for potential trends and expectations and maybe things to look forward to. And there's a lot of it out there. So that's why it's really not necessarily the best thing to trade on a headline, uh, you know, especially if you're someone who likes to hold your positions a little bit longer term. Uh, if you're a day trader, that might be one thing. But if you're looking at a longer at longer term investments, trading on headlines isn't necessarily a great idea. But now, I've been doing a lot of reading, and in particular, I've been looking at headlines surrounding the energy sector. Now, you see Adam, uh, Charles, and I see energy and commodities and sectors like these that have been beaten down uh, of late as being big beneficiaries to the recent investor rotation out of tech stocks. Uh, investors are taking profits from previously high-running tech sector uh, and moving those into beaten up sectors in hopes that it drives those stock prices up to gain more profits. It's very simple. You take money out of a high gain, out of a high gain sector, move it into a low, uh, a beaten up sector, push those prices up, you gain profits and you rotate out again. It's very simple. It happens all the time. Now uh, it's a common occurrence in the stock market, as I said. Now, now back to the headlines. I, in my research on energy stocks, I came across an article in Forbes that suggested that green energy stocks were kind of backing off their 2020 gains, but could see another big run in 2021. While that article focused on the fact that carbon, carbon neutral pledges from the US, China, and the European Union could spur more growth in renewable energy, it got me to thinking. And that led me to another piece of news. The art, this article that I found talked about how Congress here in the United States is eyeing more long-term energy uh, incentives to boost growth in the industry. So I did a little more research and kept digging. It's kind of like a rabbit hole, if you will. And I found that these incentives have been particularly good to energy sectors, especially like solar. If there's one thing that helps a particular sector of the economy, it's federal tax credits. Um, they can be in the form of credits to manufacturers to spur expansion or credits to consumers to entice them to buy particular products. We see it all the time when uh, municipalities or counties or states give incentives to big companies to expand or relocate to, to their location. We also saw it with solar in that you know it, it was uh, from 2010 to 2019, uh, or actually even longer than that, uh, the solar investment tax credit allowed homeowners and businesses to deduct up to 26% of the cost of installing a solar energy system from their federal taxes. It's a big cut. It's a, it's, it's, it's a nice incentive, and it really spurred things along. In fact, from 2010 to 2019, uh, solar power generation went from 1.2 billion kilowatt hours to 72.2 billion kilowatt, kilowatt hours. That's nearly a 6,000% increase in under a decade. And a lot of that was spurred because of this solar investment tax credit. Now, it also caused a big run in clean energy stocks. Uh, over the last three years, the NASDAQ Clean Energy, Clean Edge Energy Index gained 659%. Now, that's pretty massive. A majority of that jump came after the March 2020 coronavirus crash, but Democrats taking control of the White House and of Congress has accelerated those gains even more. Conventional wisdom here is that you know, President Joe Biden and a Democrat-controlled Congress will be more aggressive in pushing through clean energy initiatives uh, to reduce US, car U.S. carbon footprint. And so far, we've seen a lot of chatter about that. We've seen a lot of news about that. Nothing's actually come to fruition yet, but there is a lot of talk about it, and, and, and we're seeing Congress start to make moves in that general direction. But even before any legislation hits the floors of Congress, renewable energy is expected to see a massive jump over the next 30 years. In 2020, the U.S. consumed about 11.3 quadrillion British thermal units of renewable energy. That sounds like a lot, and it is. But the forecast is that that will jump to 21.5 quadrillion BTUs by 2050. That's a 90% increase in 30 years. And it makes a case for investors to hold renewable energy stocks in their portfolio because as renewable energy consumption increases, the demand for more products is going to increase as well. But there are hundreds of those. But I'll make it easy for you. 
I found an exchange traded fund that invests not only in alternative energy, but traditional energy companies as well. And that gives you great exposure to the entire sector. It's the Invesco Wilder Hill Clean Energy ETF. It trades under the ticker PBW, Paul Brian William. And it's a perfect avenue for investors looking to diversify their portfolio in the energy sector. Now, as you can see, the ETF has had a strong rise over the last year. From March 2020 lows, PBW has gained more than 300% in its stock price. And, that's been, and there's been a recent pairing of those gains, as you can see by the stock chart, uh, which provides a great opportunity to get in now and experience the next renewable energy run-up that's going to come once Congress gets, uh, gets it figured out in terms of what they're going to do with energy tax credits. Icing on the cake here is because it's an ETF, profits are paid out to stockholders in the form of dividends. Now, uh, PBW's forward dividend yield is about 0.44%, which uh, shakes out to about 44 cents per share per year. It's not the highest dividend yield out there for an ETF, but as I always say, something is better than nothing, and you can always reinvest those dividends or take them out as payment or whatever you choose. Now, if Congress looks to increasing tax credits for renewable energy, PBW is going to see impressive gains. However, even if those tax credits are slow in coming, which it's likely they are, the diversification of PBW in the entire energy market still makes it a great buy. Now, I talked to Adam about this play, and he provided some pretty good insight. He told me that he likes the span of the number of industry groups, just as technology isn't siloed and, and technology permeates to all technical industries. A global clean energy world will require integration and cooperation across many industries. So you've got power generation like wind, solar, and nuclear, power transmission like utilities, and transportation like electric vehicles. And as well as on top of that, you have materials which are needed, uh, which go into batteries and whatnot and, and other things. And then finally, you have industrials, which go into things like wind turbines. Uh, and even if the technology and software that goes into managing uh, all the physical pieces, that's part of the ETF as well. It's got a lot of moving parts, uh, but uh, a lot of thematic ETFs focus on just one aspect, just like EVs or just solar or uh, just nuclear or just wind. But PBW uh, seems to realize the interconnectedness of a clean energy world. And that's what Adam had to say about it, and I take that pretty strongly. And it's all the more reason to look at PBW for solid exposure in a growing energy sector. Now, make sure you check out our YouTube channel if you're listening to this as a traditional podcast. Just head over to YouTube, search for Money and Markets. Uh, you will have the green bull and bear logo. Click on that, subscribe, mash that bell, make sure you get notified each and every time we put out a new video. If you want to listen to the bull and the bear as a traditional podcast, you can do that as well. Uh, we're across a lot of different podcast indicators like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and a ton of others. Make sure you subscribe there and get alerted each and every time a new podcast is released. Also, leave us a review or a comment on any of these platforms. We absolutely love to read your feedback. If you have a question or a particular stock or sector you'd like us to take a look at, you can email us at thebullandthebear at moneyandmarkets.com. We'd love to do that as well. Also, head over to moneymarkets.com. As I said before, sign up for our free daily e-letter. In it, we give you safe, sound, smart, simple, uh, profitable investment information for your portfolio. Coming up uh, later this week, Money and Markets contributor Charles Sizemore, Green Zone core editor Charles Sizemore, as well as uh, uh, chief investment strategist Adam O'Dell will join me. We'll dive into a couple stocks, let you know, uh, which ones to buy. We'll give you three credible buy recommendations. You want to stay tuned for that. We'll also have the Money and Markets uh, uh, Marijuana Market Update that comes out each and every week and our week ahead that comes out on the weekend uh, to let you know what to look forward to coming up uh, in the week on Wall Street. Now, until then, this is Money and Markets Research Analyst and host of the Bull and the Bear podcast, Matt Clark, wishing each of you safe trading.